Dr. Folkers, welcome to Mind Body Peak Performance. Hey, thanks for thanks for having me, Nick. Well, I'm looking forward to this one because I talk a lot about bioharmony on this podcast, and one of the core things in bioharmony is to upgrade our existence. And once you get the basics of health and performance down, then you want to focus more on the performance side and along the lines of the things we can do to upgrade our performance. And it seems like that's what you guys specialize in. Yes. Performance, optimization, and just kind of, you know, ways to just obviously optimize your health for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, let's start out today with a controversial idea or something you have to force out of this episode. It's controversial, but I, I kind of talk about it a lot. And um, it's number one is I think the root cause I feel of pretty much literally every chronic disease that, that I've seen and that, that I've, tr I guess, treated or helped treat is insulin resistance. And I, I pretty much like kind of uh, dovetail that and tell patients when it comes to your health, it's really um, the doctor of the future is the patient. So those two things are kind of two things I'd like to you know, share with a lot of a lot of patients and a lot of people I come in contact with. Well, I interviewed Mark Sloan back on episode 68 about methylene blue and the metabolism and how that can be one of the core like, roots of health and all disease can be viewed through one paradigm as an energy deficiency somewhere along the chain. Yes, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, there's even the, the metabolic hypothesis to cancer and I, I mean, to that insulin resistance, that issue of uh, you, your cells not properly knowing how to utilize energy and, and thinking we you need sugar for uh, energy source or, or carbohydrates or glucose. Fortunately, what the, American, the standard American diet has has led to, which I feel is a lot of disease. That's pretty hard to dispute. But now, what have you done so far today for your health, your performance, and your bioharmony? So today, um, I actually got up about five this morning, and it was, I like to get up and, and work out. My 10-year-old, we're in Mexico. We're, we're here for five weeks to kind of get away from the Midwest winters. Um, and she said, hey, Dad, can I go out and walk along the beach with you? So I said, sure. So um, I typically do a little workout in the morning, but I took her out with me. Uh, we walked along the beach, so we got some grounding in. Typically, I'll, I'll, I'll do a sauna. We don't have a sauna here, so and it was kind of still dark out. But I usually practice hydration as well, so try to focus on my digestion. So I'll add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to some water. And that's kind of what we did. So I got to do it with, uh, with my 10-year-old and got, got some walking in, got some activity. And uh, then we sat on the balcony and got some sunshine. Beautiful. I love to compare and contrast notes with my guests, especially when the morning routines seem to be fairly similar. I, I know. It's like all of us kind of, I guess, bio-harmonizers. Uh, I think it's movement, hydration, sun exposure of some sort, or, you know, in, in, in the wintertime, um, we, I, my wife and I will use the sauna. That's perfect. Well, the first topic I want to dig into with you is the importance of self-quantification and diagnostics to get a full snapshot of your health, your status, where you are, before you start implementing cool, fancy fringe biohacks and supplements and therapies. As a company, we really focus on and try to educate patients on the importance of testing, of diagnostic testing. And this can obviously blood tests are, are, are great. I feel like there's a, a little bit of a misconception that most individuals don't think they should get testing done unless they are, are sick or, or feeling some sort of a, a, you know, symptom or ache or pain, or that is a good time to get test, testing done. But I do feel it's uh, anytime, not now is a good time to get testing done. So you can have uh, at least a snapshot of, of some biomarkers of a good comprehensive panel of kind of where you are right now. So you have something to kind of compare yourself to in the future. And just kind of, and then also to kind of um, uncover some potential blind spots. I mean, a lot of times we do tests for patients, and I find many times patients are low in certain nutrients. They're high in certain inflammatory markers. They have certain markers that are, and I read labs in, in a kind of a different way than most uh, physicians. It's you know, it's not just like, oh, you're this is out of range. This is your diagnosis. This is your your pill for that ill. It's reading more of a, a functional sense. So like, you, you know, we have certain markers that we want to see in more of an optimal range, uh, not just the um, not unnormal out of range, but um, that way we can kind of see like, okay, here's what's going on with your sleep. You know, this is probably why what's going on with your, you know, your concentration. Well, this is probably why. Um, and it just allows, allows us to get, like I said, like a snapshot or in a peak under the hood of what potentially could be going on and then uh, put together a customized 
individualized program that will kind of more or less uh, address that patient's goals. Yeah. I hope you can correct my, my knowledge here. But one of the things I dislike about a lot of these labs is that sure, it's giving you a snapshot in time, but there's so many different factors that can influence those dramatically, such as like, if you look at total testosterone, the way I slept last night can make a huge difference. The way I exercised yesterday or today can make a huge difference. And it's so hard just to isolate only the variable and figure out the factors that went into that. So it's hard to reproduce. No, you're hundred percent accurate on that. In fact, blood markers, blood labs are a snapshot exactly of what, what's going on right right there in that moment of your life and that time of your day. A lot of these markers are transient, so they are changing. That's why it's very important to get a good history and, and listen to a patient from a subjective standpoint. And oftentimes, you know, like I said before, guys, you know, will wait until they're damn near like broke down and just busted up and until they go to a doctor. But low testosterone, for example, especially free testosterone, to kind of give you some clarity, there's total testosterone which is the amount of testosterone that's essentially like in your in your blood, then there's free testosterone. So free testosterone is a marker I really like to pay more attention to. That's what's bioavailable. So that, that's what your cells are able to utilize. And, you know, we'll see guys that are maybe saying, yeah, you know, I'm not sleeping well. I'm having some little more aches and pains. I'm noticing I'm gaining belly fat. They may have perfect libido and they, they're not mentioning anything about erection problems or, or energy, but they just notice, you know, some things like, you know, I'm kind of irritable more than I normally was according to my wife and I'm not sleeping that well. I'm snoring a lot. I'm, you know, I'm gaining weight. Lo and behold, their free testosterone is, is low. And so that can be a sign of some issues. And then we want to dig deeper, like what could potentially be causing that low level of, of free testosterone. So, uh, it's not just the, the lab value. It's listening to the patient and also kind of digging deeper into what potentially could be causing that. Like you, like you said, are you dealing with a lot of stress right now? Yes. Are, are did you have a, you know, a strenuous exercise? I just talked to a guy, Today, in fact, that ran like a, like a marathon just on, on Saturday and his levels were pretty low. So, Yeah, that's a good point that I think the qualification is just as important, if not more important in a lot of cases than the quantification, because I can tell you how I'm feeling and that's more consistent. I can see the trends, but there's so many things that can cause my free testosterone to drop for a day or two days or three days. And the hormones are notorious for fluctuating throughout the day cortisol spiking in the morning and then it should drop down later. And then if you just take a single point and you get another blood test and it's at a different time, you might get a totally different result, which is can also be healthy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like labs are one of those things where, you know, I especially don't put a lot of emphasis on just one marker because everything affects everything. You know, we kind of have a, a, a tendency to, to simplify, oversimplify and reduce these markers and think there's so there, there's too much belief that this this marker being this causes this and but it's really a symphony of you know like you said high cortisol chronically high cortisol can cause low testosterone so what causes the high cortisol you know and then um, that can affect thyroid hormone and that can affect you know other markers and so um, really have to kind of you know just kind of look at each marker um, and, and understand that there that that is just what's going on in that moment but really what's the patient's goals like why are you here what is it you're wanting to do about investing in your health and improving in your health? And that's where we want to kind of start talking about, you know, what, what type of a program to put you on. And I know you're not going to like this given what you just said, but if you were to design the minimal effective lab testing protocol that you would recommend that if people can afford, they would regularly track and maybe it's not gonna have all the bells and whistles. It's not gonna be as comprehensive. You're not going to have the reassurance of multiple biomarkers to test for inflammation or hormonal status. If you just condensed it all into something simple, what would you choose? Yeah, I mean, it can be any types of testing, but it's just like the best tests to get an overall snapshot of your health affordably. Being a functional medicine practitioner, one of the tests that I really like to do a lot is a test that measured inflammation, which was the omega-6 to 3 ratio. It really helps identify a dietary standpoint because inflammation is part of really the root cause of, of this whole thing. And if, and if I could add a C-peptide and a, maybe a fasting insulin, those would be like, like, like I talked about before, insulin resistance is something that where so many Americans just have too much fast, their insulin, their fasting insulin is much higher than we want it to see. And that will feed into that inflammatory process, which believe it or not, we can help optimize by improving testosterone. And so testosterone does have a lot of anti-inflammatory components and there's some 
evidence that shows how that it can that can help with cardiovascular disease that can help with you know, obesity and the, the inflammatory cascade that causes but if i were to go back it would be like omega-6 omega-3 ratio and then that would be a good test to start oh nice and simple and you also just said what some people view as the dirty T word, and that is testosterone. There's a lot of myths and misconceptions about what this hormone does, the importance of it, low T versus high T. Can you break down like your view on hormone optimization therapy? Yeah, so I think, and I get like the T word part because I know there's a lot of stigma around it, and like the you know the abuse in the in like the bodybuilding world and and, and that kind of a thing. And there are a lot of people that that are not like competitive bodybuilders that take it um, or get it from somebody somewhere. But when it comes to testosterone optimization, the, the approach that we have is like, we're going to test uh, an individual and we do put women on testosterone, but obviously men um, are more often, you know, coming for this and we're going to put them on a treatment that is suitable for them. And we monitor patients very closely. So once again, you want to make sure that these guys are, are good candidates, it, be it age, the labs, and all those different kind of qualifications. And, and also, when we start them on testosterone, we're going to check their labs and make sure they're in a, an optimal range and, you know, check all these other markers, but listen to these guys. So the thing is, is it's not always putting a guy on testosterone. It, it could be addressing their cortisol, like we talked about. It, it could be trying some supplements. It could be trying another product called Clomid or Enclomiphene that can help to jumpstart their natural production of testosterone. It could be addressing their insulin resistance, getting them to lose weight. It's not always to start TRT, but it's figuring out what the root cause is, addressing the root cause and getting that testosterone level at an optimal level, because that is that does happen to be a hormone that does so many wonderful things when it is optimized. Well, it's nice to hear that you're not a hormone replacement therapy pill mill type where you just toss everyone on the same protocol. I think it'd be really helpful to cover, like dispel some of the myths around testosterone and explain why it is so important. Yeah, so every hormone in the body is kind of defined as it's a chemical made somewhere, like a, by a gland, in case the testes, and then it is goes throughout the body and affects pretty much the whole body. And so testosterone does have um, amazing benefits from part mental health to, believe it or not, cardiovascular health, to energy, to um, like if you look, listen to individuals that have low testosterone, sleep is affected. They, they have poor quality sleep. Their bone density starts to be compromised. Muscle can, can waste away. They, start, they, gain, they gain body fat. They have more chronic aches and pains versus an individual where their testosterone is more optimized. Testosterone actually makes effort feel good. So these guys actually ha have better mood. They want to you know, go at, after life and you know, be a little bit more, have initiative and, and, and have drive, have zest. You know, like I said, it has that anti-inflammatory component, one thing that a lot of individuals don't realize about testosterone is it, it can help reverse cardiovascular disease. And it does so by, believe it or not, activating something called LXR, which is like the master regulator of like the cholesterol. Uh, it's kind of like the cholesterol homeost homeostatic master regulator of, of cholesterol inflammation in the body. When you activate LXR, it actually can help remove ApoB protein from the endothelium. And this will help basically reduce inflammation throughout the body and help with um, overall cardiovascular health. And testosterone also has been known to help reduce adipose tissue. When, it, when somebody has um, increased adipocytes, the fat cells themselves will also release inflammatory markers. And so testosterone will help reduce not only the adipocytes, but also the inflammation that it causes. A lot of people don't realize that that benefit on its own of, of what testosterone can do for both heart health and for weight loss and for inflammation. So it also, with that, can help reverse insulin resistance to some degree. So those are some benefits of having um, optimal testosterone. And another thing on that note, having optimal testosterone can help lead to having optimal estrogen. And believe it or not, a lot of times we kind of demonize est estrogen, especially for, uh, men do. Um, we think it's a bad hormone or it's a female hormone. It's actually a human hormone. So we do need estrogen as men, just like women need testosterone. It's uh, super important. And studies have shown that if estradiol gets too low, and I know there's a lot of PRT clinics out there that automatically put pretty much most of their patients on a on an estrogen blocker and block estrogen too much, that can actually be very detrimental very detrimental to a, to a man's health. It can affect mental their health mentally. It can affect their bone density. It can cause 
heart issues. And so, in fact, there's a study that I, I read recently that if estradiol is lower than 13, it can increase mortality by like 317% or something like that. So it's a pretty important hormone. Yeah. Back when I was interested in bodybuilding and gaining size as fast as possible, I was looking at natural estrogen blockers. And then I came across something that was talking about the neuroprotective impact of estrogen. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't just indiscriminately try and block estrogen. Yeah, it's, I can't, you know, being in, in I've competed in, in bodybuilding and I've been around bodybuilding for a long time and, and powerlifting. And for some reason, the estrogen is like, like you said, it's like everybody wants to block estrogen. And, and there's the, I had friends that were, that, they were just taking estrogen blockers. I think, and I didn't understand why, but it's just like, oh, that, you know, I think they thought by lowering estrogen, you're somehow raising testosterone, but it's definitely not the, the way to go about optimizing your, your endocrine system is to lower estrogen. I want to rewind to something I heard you say a minute ago and a specific keyword I heard you say what was optimal levels of testosterone, because I think that most people, when they think about testosterone, one of the side effects that immediately comes to mind is uh, the impact on the cardiovascular system. Maybe they've heard that it actually has the opposite effect and it can lead to cardiovascular disease or problems. I think that theory comes from knowing that guys that are on t uh, testosterone replacement therapy can develop elevated hematocrit levels and which potentially increased blood pressure. But if you look at all the studies with, that and I have, I haven't found any studies that when a man is, has an optimal level of testosterone, that it is linked to heart disease or, or stroke. What's been responsible for the demonization of it then? I think the abuse that like the gym guys, they're taking more than testosterone. So the, the, the guys that have like the giant muscles and that kind of like glorify this, you know, being like this super ripped muscular guy, and they're taking more anabolic products than just testosterone. And these are the things that are probably believed that it's testosterone that's causing those issues, but it's really these, all these other anabolic agents that are the, the anabolic, I guess, steroid type of, uh, type of type of products that are out there. What about growth hormone? Do you guys use growth hormone much in your clinic? So we, we don't prescribe growth hormone, like exogenous growth hormone. We actually, what we prescribe are HGH peptides or growth hormone secretagogues. So peptides are definitely, you know, different from, from hormones. They're like, you probably heard of a protein, obviously it's a long chain of amino acids. So peptides are shorter chains of amino acids. These are going through our body all the time. We have peptides all throughout our body. What we have are these different categories of growth hormone secretagogues, GHRHs and GHRPs. And so we can prescribe known as like CJC1295 is one of them. Sormorelin is one of them. Ipamorelin is another one. Um, and so these peptides are what we prescribe. And so what they do is they more or less mimic your body's natural production of growth hormone. So you're not replacing HGH or growth hormone with exogenous growth hormone. You're actually guiding and enhancing your body's natural ability to produce growth hormone. Yeah. Well, anyone that's interested in this particular topic is, might have heard of those. And one thing I came across in my own research when I was like looking into this stuff is the need to combine GHRPs and GHRHs together to prevent some kind of like receptor downregulation or damage. Do you know anything about that? That happens to be products that we use is we're combining GHRH with the GHRP. There's sermorelin combined with ipamorelin. And so what they do is they're both kind of affecting and impacting the pituitary a little bit differently. You know, if an individual, because as we age, aging is part of life. As we age, protein synthesis slows down, HGH production kind of slows down. And we don't know if a person's, you know, if the part of the pituitary that is impacted is the release of growth hormone or the production of growth hormone. So the GHRHs and GHRPs combined will kind of help stimulate that pituitary production and release of growth hormone. And so that way you get kind of like a consistent result using those combines. You can use a CJC-1295 with ipamorelin or sermorelin with ipamorelin. Those are the two pretty um, common ones we prescribe. Yeah, and this is getting into the weeds a bit, but there is something called the DAC. I think that's how it's pronounced. What, what is that? Yeah, so that's like it, what it does, the DAC. So if you add that to the, which we don't use, it's it's going to give more of a longer release. Like it, it lengthens the half-life, which I'm not a big fan of because then what you're doing is you're kind of, you're no longer mimicking a natural physiologic re release of growth hormone. So 
we, we don't prescribe any of our HGRHs with DAC. What we're really doing is we're, we're, we're and you've heard things that increase growth hormone, you know, sauna use, fasting, uh, resistance training, exercise, sleep, all these things will increase HGH. And we want to mimic that natural release and, and enhance it by adding in the peptides or bed, fasted or before a workout or something like that, because we just, we're just trying to enhance what your body is already doing. But we don't want to, we don't want to add in a kind of like a longer drawn out release that, that would more or less kind of be similar to like a exogenous growth hormone. Yeah. Well, Dr. Fulkers, we talk about bioharmony in this show and going without the DAC. Uh, that seems like it's a much more bioharmonious approach. It's mimicking biomimicry at its finest. So what else do you recommend to people who come to you and they want help on the physical performance optimization side? Our company is about an individualized approach, taking ownership of your health. We have a lot of patients that come to us looking for, for weight loss. Uh, they've tried everything from diet to, you know, even gastric bypass surgery and, and these things have failed. We've been very sought at. We've been sought after a lot for, for the, uh, the GLP-1 product. That's something we've been prescribing, the semaglutides, the uh, terzipatides, those kind of products. There's, a, I'm a fan of some other peptides like BPC-157 for repair, for recovery. So it just kind of depends on what the patient is coming to us. I like BPC-157 also for gut health benefits and really shown um, individuals that have leaky gut, you know, IBS, all sort of issues. And they, they, we prescribe the BPC and that really seems to help optimize and improve those symptoms. Yeah. I've heard BPC-157 referred to as the Wolverine peptide. And it seems like it can be used for just about anything under the sun. Stands for body protective compound. And yeah, Wolverine peptide, Wolverine drug. I'm crazy. I like to work out. I told you I was in bodybuilding. So I've trained to break a couple of world records a few years ago. During during COVID, I was bored. And I'm like, hey, I'm just going to start to try to break these world records. So I was doing dips and I put 60 pound backpack on my back and do as many dips as I could. And I got to the point where I was able to break the world record. Then I was like, I want to break the world record of the, of the heaviest weighted dip. And I started training to do that, to do the world record for the dip and a lot of weight on it. You know, I'd put three plates and four plates and then I was going down one time and then pop and there was a pop in my shoulder. And sure enough, it was like, it hurt to, you know, my daughter would lay on my, ah, in my shoulder. So I took the BPC and I injected it, you know, full disclosure in my shoulder and I just hit different spots each night. And literally within two weeks, it was like, it never happened. I swear if I've, I had injuries like that before and it was two months before I could get back into really lifting. And I was going back doing dips within three weeks. I believe it is a Wolverine peptide. It, it, nothing else has, has allowed me to heal and recover from injuries like, like that peptide. One of the products that personally have had amazing results with, but I've seen awesome stories and testimonials, patients that have been on, and not just musculoskeletal injuries, but patients that have been on protein pump inhibitors for years, taking this stuff and they're off of the off of the antacids, people that have had like, you know, um, ulcerative colitis and these different, you know, gut issues for years and being able to take this stuff. And it's, it's been life changing for them. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. My dad had a knee replacement recently and I tried to get him on BPC and he wouldn't because I think it was because it was an injectable. What about the nasal sprays? Do you find that you have good results with those? The BPC, I mean, he could, your dad could take the, the capsules. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I'll get to the nasal spray because the BPC, um, it's derived from gastric secretion. It is one of those peptides that is able to maintain efficacy to a good degree orally. It, it'll have that systemic effect. But I think somebody that has had any kind of surgery of, of some sort, yeah, the injectable will be great because you can locally hit it where you want. But I would at least encourage him to take it uh, orally, the capsules, because I mean, my mom had both knees replaced. I've had like everyone in my mom's side families have like their knees replaced. So it's, that is not a fun recovery, <laughs> uh, you know, but we have products like C-Max, which is like a nootropic type of a peptide. I've tried with the, the nasal application works pretty well, but there are um, some products out there that have like injectable options or the nasal. They don't seem to be e efficacious in my opinion. Yeah. It's not as efficacious. You don't get as much bang for your buck. But it's way more convenient. And for people who are uncomfortable with that, it can be the only way that they can get it in their body. Yeah. I mean, just like, you know, uh, like we were talking about the HGH secretagogue peptides, we could get those in trochies because there are people, protocol is you're doing, you're giving yourself an injection at night, 
five days out of the week, two days off. Some people just, they, they get needle fatigue. They don't want to inject themselves. It's a teeny little needle little needle and it's you know it's not once you do it, it's like oh this isn't a big deal I, I mean I, ha I have a daughter that's a type 1 diabetic you know I've seen her give her self injections for multiple times a day all her life and it's to me it's like man she can do it you know I can do it but we we can prescribe these and get these in what's called trochies so the little oral dissolvable tablets you put in your mouth let it dissolve so it does absorb and some patients really get feel like they get great results of that route. And it's probably not as efficacious, but like you said, at least they're getting something in their system. Yeah. Are trochies different than traditional like oral supplementation because it like absorbs sublingually and gets into the bloodstream better? Yeah. It's kind of like think about you know the baseball players, the guys that use chewing tobacco, right? You're getting that the, the nicotine through through the oral mouth, through the oral route that way. So it's kind of doing that, working that same pathway um, so you're not really meant to swallow it it's just kind of get them absorbed through the, through the mouth versus like a supplement i was looking to see if i could buy like a trochee kit and make my own to use for certain nootropics and supplements like methylene blue but it's not as easy as that apparently hey, have you tried methylene blue that's one thing i have not tried yep i actually have some oh, look at that yeah. right here i know all the people were doing the the blue tongue thing <laughs> i need that's that's what that's one product i still need i still haven't tried I like it at a super low dose of like 10 milligrams. And for reference, the animal studies are like four milligrams per kilogram. So certain people recommend like 60, 70, 80, 90 milligrams. But for me, it's just like a very small amount and it has a different effect than a larger dose. Wow. Super cool. Yeah. Let's go on to some of the other peptides because I was going through your website and I saw that you guys have specific stacks for, let's say, like hair health. Yeah. So we have your GHK copper uh, peptides, which are kind of like a more uh, topical route. So that's going to help, um, you know, activate hair follicle. That peptide is also great for just overall skin health. My, my wife loves that product. Being a functional medicine practitioner, we've, you know, worked with essential oils and my wife even formulated her own like Face serum years ago. And then when we started getting into the peptides, she was trying the uh, GHK creams. And so she's like, wow, this stuff's really great. She noticed the, her pores and her face just looked, looked healthier, her skin looked healthier, even friends and, you know, uh, at work. She, she's a nurse and would, would comment like, wow, your skin looks so uh, vibrant and healthy. So yeah, that's a, that's a topical peptide. It can be used to help accelerate healing of, of like scars or, or, you know, injuries or to the face or abrasions. So really good for like hair restoration, skin health, and that and that sort of a thing. Yeah, what else are you looking at on the on the site? Yeah, well, I actually I have that I have GHK oh, CU, you? and I it's just in a little vial. It has a really nice blue color to it, yep. and I had a great reason to use it when I got it. By the time it arrived, I forgot what the great use was, so I haven't actually <laughs> got around to using it. But it's there for one day. There you go. Yeah, that was that was one more on the weight loss side. I know it's no magic bullet and there are no magic bullets per se but the glp1 agonists are a really hot class of medication and people are seeing incredible results and there's like the first generation the second generation i think they're on the third generation now i haven't covered that at all in the show so can you break down what that is yeah so yeah glp1s um basically it's a peptide that's secreted by you know the cells in your intestine um, especially when in the presence of food and in especially with carbohydrates. And so it, it's basically going to help with satiety. So it's a signal to help you, okay, you're full. We also have GLP-1 receptors in the brain, tell you you're full, you know, you, know you, you don't need to eat anymore. And so the peptide that we were prescribing very often, and it's very effective, is semaglutide. It's a, um, Ozempic is the GLP-1, I guess that would be like your first generation that was more for like type 2 diabetics. Semaglutide is very powerful for weight loss for people that suffer with obesity. And it, it, you can get it prescribed through your insurance if, if you have um, type 2 diabetes or you're obese. It will help with satiety and it will help with cravings. And it kind of like, I like to think of it as it takes kind of the willpower out of the, the diet piece where people just like can have, I've heard patients say this, they have they have a plate of cookies or a cake or something, you know, something that they, they, they just can't like say no to. And they're like, I'm good. People for decades for decades have just not found success with their weight loss goals with Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, Medifast, we, you know, all these different programs where they're counting calories and they're limiting. Yeah, they'll lose weight. Everyone will lose weight if they are in a deficit. But 
what, what we find is if it's not sustainable, if, if that deficit is something they can't adhere to, you gain it back. All these people gain it back. It's because they haven't been able to create, a, in my opinion, um, habits that they can adhere to and stick to. What I like about these GLP-1 peptides, they work and they allow you to stay on them for a period of time where you can, you can basically start to gain and learn these new habits to, to stick to. For, for, for the long haul. So semaglutide is the one that we've been prescribing. The newer one is, is terzipatide. It's a GLP-1. It also has um, another ingredient that helps prevent some of the blood sugar drops that people do experience with the semaglutide. It seems to have less side effects than semaglutide. Semaglutide can, for some people, cause a little bit of nausea that tends to occur in the, in the beginning when they're trying the product and their body is getting, kind of getting used to it. But both products are very, very effective um, for, like I said, weight loss. Another uh, thing I like about it is it really helps to improve the insulin resistance uh, component. So it's helping the pancreas release insulin to help control that blood sugar um, dysregulation. So people start to um, have less of the blood sugars. I've had patients that come to us where we do blood labs, um, like we talked about labs before, and we see patient after patient after patient that are pre-diabetic, and we, we have several that are diabetic, and they never knew they were diabetic. Their hemoglobin A1C is like 6.9. No one ever told them that. They never even knew they were diabetic, never even thought they, ha- they, they were diabetic. And we've put them on one of these GL- GLP-1 products. After a few months, we check their blood sugars again, and they're no longer diabetic. So it's been pretty, I mean, this goes to show you that once you're diabetic, always you're diabetic. It's definitely something that you can reverse. And so it's another cool effect of the GLP-1 products is it helps optimize blood sugar imbalances. That's huge. And I love the idea of taking something. I mean, I advocate nootropics a lot of times for people who have a hard time building habits until they get the habits down and then they can wean off them and then they have that new habit and it wasn't incredibly painful and they weren't hating life every day to get there. The name of the game really is, Nick, it's, it's developing habits. It's developing a lifestyle. We talked about what do we do today? These are things we just didn't like start doing. We had to kind of work, add these things day by day into our repertoire. And the thing is, is like all these people, they've tried going to the gym. They've tried diet, that diet, the HCG. Some of these people have tried gastric bypass or some, some other um, bariatric procedure and gained the weight back right? They did everything imaginable that they, th- that they thought worked for their friend, their relative, their cousin, their neighbor. And it maybe worked for them for, for a little bit, but they went right back to their old habits. That's what I like about this business. People said, wow, for the first time, I mean, literally, if people tell us that this is for the first time in years, I've been able to say I'm 100 and something pounds instead of 250 or 280 or three, you know what I mean? It, it's So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Are there any other ways of targeting similar signaling pathways for satiety and to make like weight loss easier if you don't have access to this kind of thing, like any nu- nutrients or nutraceuticals that people can look into? So I've heard that, I mean, there definitely are some like supplements, you know, metformin has been touted like as it's another, I guess, medication, one of the most commonly prescribed medications there is that helps with blood sugar and helps with weight loss. But another um, interesting tea that mimics uh, the GLP-1 is Herba Mate tea. You can drink that and it kind of has that same effect on satiety. And then another is berberine that, that also helps with the blood sugar component and can help prevent these. Because here's the thing, at the, at the name of the day, what, what I feel, obviously, appetite control is huge. I mean, it's like one thing that one of the most powerful urges that we have is hunger. You, it's, you, animals w- will chew their leg off. They're kept from food. And it's just hunger is very, very powerful. If a person were to maybe, when you mentioned foods, were to focus more like on healthy proteins, healthy fats, that could definitely help maybe get into a state of ketosis through fasting, things like that. And once you get there, your hunger is definitely controlled, but it's just getting there is the, is, is the hard part. So there's another peptide we can prescribe, AOD, which is actually a peptide that it's a component of growth hormone that that's specific for weight loss. And so that also can help with appetite to some degree and weight loss. It doesn't work for everybody. Very, very high, high percent of individuals that the, the GLP-1s work for. And like I said, I don't really encourage or plan for any 
all these patients to stay on this for the rest of their life. It's just, this is, like I said, my, our goal is to teach you about lifestyle. You know, we have some patients that they, they know themselves. They know like, look, I've lost weight before. I always gain it back. I've lost weight. I gain it back. They choose, they want to go on a, as a maintenance type of a pro, protocol, maybe not inject every, every week, but maybe every other week, a, a, a low dose. But most patients, that's not necessary. So once they reach their weight loss goal, we've seen patients that have been able to keep it off through the lifestyle. So berberine, metformin, you know, or berberine's that kind of poor man's metformin, berber mate tea. But yeah, I mean, that, I mean, you're asking, the, the question is, is like, man, that, that's the, I mean, other than the, these GLP ones, I have not seen other weight loss products work as well, honestly. Yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of berberine. If I'm going to have a big meal, lots of carbohydrates, but specifically a metabolite of berberine called dihydroberberine, which is more potent and much longer lasting and doesn't have the same GI upset that berberine has because that's a big complaint that a lot of people have who use it. Nice. Where, where do you get that product? Would you say it was GI? It's dihydroberberine patented. There's a company that produces it and I use a product that's called Blood Sugar Breakthrough by by optimizers and it has a bunch of other like blood sugar supportive ingredients in it so i like that one and i'm also a huge fan of the whole muscle centric medicine protein centric medicine approach because protein is very satiating and also there's a thermic effect of it meaning that you don't actually absorb and assimilate all or 100 of the calories i think it's only like 70 percent of the calories which means your body actually burns and wastes about 30% of the calories in protein. Yeah, because protein is, is metabolically, it, it basically helps you lose weight. <laughs> I, I'm, a, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I, if I were to say if, if any type of like categorize myself, I'm kind of in like a keto carnivore-ish kind of a protocol like that I follow. It's just where I feel the best. And, and here's the thing, when, when, I, when we work with patients that are going on this GLP-1, products i don't want people to lose muscle and when people say when people say hey you know i want to lose weight they're they don't want to lose muscle they don't want to lose bone density they they want to lose fat i mean when people when people want to lose weight they want to lose fat so i highly encourage them and teach them and educate them and coach them prioritize protein because that is like to your point it's going to be the, um, the it's important for uh maintaining muscle building muscle but also um, satiating them even all the more. And that's what you want them to adhere to after if you, once you remove that GLP-1. Yeah. And also lean body mass is one of the greatest predictors of health span, not just lifespan, but the quality of those years, the health, your actual health span. And one of the biggest mistakes I see in the longevity industry is that people completely cut out protein because they're scared of anabolism and activating mTOR. And it's like, okay, yeah, you can be catabolic your whole life, but you're going to be cold, libidoless, and ultimately very frail later in life. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, one of the things you mentioned earlier was nootropics, and you mentioned CMAX. And I've seen that there are a number of different forms of CMAX. I have the nasal spray of a couple different forms, including the original and one called N acetyl CMAX amidate. And I read that the second one was more potent and I was looking forward to trying it. And I have a couple little nasal sprayers of it. And for me, it's virtually useless. I don't feel anything at all, but the original one is very powerful for me. It's plain old CMAX. What are you seeing with people using CMAX? Of the pharmacies we work with, that's currently what we what we can access is the old C-Max and it seems to be more potent. I don't, I don't know, you know, what the, the formulations are different, but, but one of the things about C-Max is it's something I don't think people should use every day. It seems like there's some degree of receptor sensitivity that kind of tends to drop off like everything. I like to, and I don't have, I don't have any with me in Mexico, and bring it with, but, but before podcasts or before I'm doing a meeting or something, I'll, I like to take some, I really feel like it's, it heightens my alertness and my focus and memory. Definitely also helps with anxiety. So it's a great product for, for, for those uh, benefits. Uh, now there's another nootropic called C-Lank. Um, that's great, really more, geared more for anxiety and um, stress and that kind of a thing. So we've great, heard great stories and feedback from people that have you know post-traumatic stress and even individuals that have ADHD tried the C-Max and they're like, man, this stuff is, is amazing. But then there's people like, you know, that just like, I didn't really notice anything from that. So it's definitely a individual hit or miss kind of a product but for some people it's it's amazing i mean we've had patients that have had 
really, really bad post COVID brain fog. And they're just like, man, just really foggy. And we, we sent them some of, uh, sent them the C-Max and it just pulled them right out of it. It's a very interesting feeling. It's not quite like a stimulant, but it makes your brain just come online and you feel like instantly alert, but not like stimulated, like too much tunnel vision. Like you feel like still aware in a way. Will you explain like what C-Max is if you are able to and how it works? Yeah, I guess to simplify it, I mean, it does, it, it has been shown to kind of help stimulate kind of blood flow to the neurons, but it is essentially it's, it's similar to taking like a cold shower where you, you kind of, you have that like little bit of like stress um, that kind of wakes you up. So like um, it kind of has a similar pathway where you're stimulating that norepinephrine and you just kind of get the, those, those neurons firing that gets you in that kind of, like you said, that kind of alert state, but not too much where you're like, where you're like have tunnel vision and you're, in, um, and you're kind of like, you're just aware of in, in the moment. I feel like it's something to take if you want to just um, focus on a task that you need to get done, want to get done um, versus, you know, ha- being like squirrel every, you know, five minutes kind of thing. So I think that's, it, it kind of like focuses, uh, uh, it emphasizes like the stress response in a, in a healthy way. Hmm. I know with certain other nootropics, I'll take them. And if I can focus on whatever I'm working on, it's great. But if I get it all distracted, then I can spend four hours cleaning my apartment. Yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah, that's why I got stay away from the uh, social media, get caught in that, that you know, uh, Instagram wormhole. <laughs> yeah. But why did you guys choose CMAX and like the neuropeptides over some of the other options out there? Because there's so many nootropics and smart drugs and everything, but you guys chose these two. We're getting soon in the supplement space where we are adding in a lot of the medicinal mushrooms and, and these other ones. It's just that the C-Max and the C-Link, these are the ones that are available through like as far as prescribables um, through the compounding pharmacies, but we're definitely open and I'm privy to all nootropics. I think it's anything that helps um, optimize brain function, focus, relaxation is important. And, uh, you know, maybe from the, on the website, it looks like um, we're kind of limited, but we do have like definitely other products that help with brain health. There's deep Delta sleep inducing peptide that actually helps with brain function, helps also, you know, optimize the delta wave sleep. So there's a lot of people that don't get really great deep sleep or, or good REM sleep. So that's a peptide that kind of helps, but also helps with brain fog. There definitely are some other other peptides that may not be listed on the website, but we definitely prescribe. Yeah. And one of the things I like about peptides, as you mentioned earlier, is that they're produced naturally in the body. So it's not like a foreign molecule that your body's never seen. It's biosimilar. I don't know if it's bioidentical, but it's at least biosimilar. And what else? Like, why did you guys choose peptides aside from their availability and relative safety? If you were to look at kind of the difference of, you know, let's say, you know, your typical pharmaceutical drug um, versus versus a peptide, you know, medications are are made in a lab and they're they're chemically produced, and the way they function is oftentimes they're inhibiting or changing a biochemical like reaction in the body. You know, if you're taking an inset, it's inhibiting the process in the body that inhibit inflammation. If you're taking a proton pump inhibitor, it's inhibiting something. And so that's what medications do. If you look at peptides, they're like you said, they're more or less like naturally existing in the body, little, little chains of amino acids floating around. And by taking them in through injections or trochees or nasal spray, you're actually guiding and just basically enhancing what the body's already able to do. So we want to kind of follow a more holistic, natural approach. And, and that, I mean, that's really our, our philosophy is we want to really allow the body to function optimally on its own. But really, it's not the peptide. It's back to what we've talked about. It is doing the work, the lifestyle, the diet, you know, using your kitchen, going to the gym, moving your body. Those are the things that actually will move the needle. You can have a guy that sits on the couch, doesn't do anything, injects peptides, injects testosterone. He's really, you're not going to get much out of that. So it's really more than medications or peptides. It's teaching you, coaching you how to live your best life. These peptides, these supplements, and these, some of these hormones are um, more like catalysts, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I don't say I have it. I think there's a there's a there's a need and there's a place for medication 
like I got into functional medicine because I, I really didn't see people getting better from treating symptoms. You go to the doctor and they see you have high blood pressure. It's like, how, you know, how long is that patient on a blood pressure medication for? They're, or if they're put on a statin, how long are they expected to take that statin medication? Just like what we talked about before, if a person's a diabetic and you go to a doctor that learns in medical school that once you're a diabetic, always a diabetic, that these patients are on the, these medications for life. In, unfortunately, they get caught in a system where it seems like they're just um, on more medications and more medications and more procedures and more tests. That's not the company we, we envisioned and we wanted to to build. We want to, you know, we want to give patients their health and teach them to be responsible for, for their own health. Well, I'm glad there's companies out there like you. If people are interested in working with you and getting a custom protocol to accomplish their unique goals... How do they go about that? It's pretty easy. We um, in our pro- in the process is easy. We have two websites for male patients. For guys, they can go to blokes.co, B-L-O-K-E-S dot C-O. And then for women, it's choosejoy.co, which in the joy is spelled J-O-I. That way you can go, you can fill out the online questionnaire. It takes like two, three minutes. From there, we can our team can order you a, a lab. We like to start like labs to really do a deep dive and see what the what's going on. And uh, from there, you can get a consultation. And it's pretty, pretty easy. Yeah, we're licensed in 50 states. So we're, currently, we can, we can help everybody all across America. Okay, well, thank you for that. And we will go on to one more question before a rapid fire round, and we'll call it a day. What three teachers have had the biggest impact on your life and work? Could these teachers be like, um, like, they have to be like teachers, like, professors or just or any, 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 like like any okay so i think the first would be um so uh, my background is chiropractic there's a chiropractor his name is dr gonstead so he's probably the guy that allowed me to understand and see that you know the root cause of, of health is really how, how the body is is an amazing system you know it's not just we have a medical model which which is very compartmentalized you have a specialist that looks at this and a specialist that looks at the heart and a specialist that looks at the gut and the brain and they're not talking to each other. And what I learned from Dr. Gonstead is everything is just connected. And you know, the body is just like, you know, the brain affects this and the, and, and the gut affects the brain. And so Dr. Gonstead was a great one. Another one I would say is Dr. Datis Karajian. I know hard name to pronounce. Um, that's where I really learned about functional medicine. And you know, my uh, what got me into functional medicine was I have a daughter that has Hashimoto's and, and vitiligo. My wife has... Um, ulcerative colitis and my, I have another daughter with, with type 1 diabetes. So having kids and spouse with autoimmunity it really kind of forced me to learn this stuff and I became very passionate about helping other individuals with, with um, autoimmunity and other chronic diseases. So Dr. Karajian is a guy that I've followed for, for many years. Another good, um, I guess, influence for me is Dr. Josh Axe because I, I have a lot of appreciation for what he's done. I've been watching, following his uh, his content for many years as well. Um, he's kind of a guy I like to emulate as well. So those are three, I think, big big ones for me. Nice. Well, perfect. We'll go on to the rapid fire round now, and we'll start off with some of the biggest myths you see around hormone optimization, uh, peptides, and any of the other compounds you use. You know, first myth is like often think testosterone is just about libido and it's or it's just about muscle mass, whatever it really is. Um, and it's just for men. I mean, testosterone is something that it benefits women as well. So, get you know, getting checked is very easy. And you'd be surprised if that, wow, your your hormones aren't optimized, not just getting on the hormone itself, but figuring out why at whether it's your estrogen or your testosterone, your free or total levels are low or not where, where, where they should be. And I didn't even mention this before, there, there has been a shown steady decline in testosterone decade after decade after decade. If you go back even to just the 80s, it's, it, we're significantly less than we were in the 80s now. Don't be afraid to get checked. Yeah, and on top of that, the lab reference ranges have slowly been sliding as well. So you might be optimal by today's standards, but a couple of decades ago, you'd be out of range. There's been weird things happening with the labs, just like you said, like the, the normal range for testosterone was higher, now it's lower, just like the, the normal cholesterol um, was, uh, was higher, now it's, now it's lower, <laughs> you know what I mean? So all these things are just kind of like out of, out of whack. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, like one of the things that we talk about a lot is we're just not the same men as our grandfathers were. I mean, when you look at just the testosterone piece, so. Yeah. 
What's one thing that you're interested in and researching these days? Um, after reading that book on that we talked about with the, the heart health, I'm really super intrigued and interested in all things cardiovascular, protective, and heart health. Uh, that book um, really opened my eyes to like all the myths about it's, this is the number one killer. I mean, and it's like the more I know, the more I realize we really don't know <laughs> the truth about it. So I'm very passionate about that. I think that's um, something um, I really want to kind of dig into deeper and maybe have some some uh, answers for our patients over with heart health. Yep. And for all you tuning in right now, doctor is talking about the book by Dr. Stephen Hussey back, we covered in episode 84. So you can go back and review that if you want to learn more about what he's talking about. Great book too. Great book. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And finally, what's one thing that the blokes and Joy Tribe don't know about you? I'm an aspiring world record holder. I actually have broken the world record. Like, Four or five times, I but I officially need to, I guess, get Guinness to however they do it, get in to get in the book. So um, that's I think something that I don't think they know about. Mm -hmm. I like it. That was new to me as well. Well, if there's one thing that you want people to take away from our conversation today, what would that be? Um, I think one thing is take ownership of your health and uh, whatever that is for you. You know, I, I, I think investing in your health is not a, not even an expense it really is an investment and unfortunately a lot of people prioritize so many other things above health and if that means getting some labs done getting your vitamin d level checked do that just do yourself a favor in awareness i feel awareness is um is the key so become aware of where you are give us a call we can we can start with some very basic labs we have we have panels that are like literally normally Five six hundred dollars we can get for as low as forty nine bucks. So we have some great deals we can get with uh, LabCorp, and so we want to pass those on to patients. So awareness is is the answer, and take ownership. So get some labs done. Beautiful. I had no idea that lab testing can be that cheap. You know what? I didn't either. <laughs> Even other other labs you talk to, you're like how how are you getting these that cheap? And we just we we really we do a lot of volume with with labs, and so we kind of to negotiate that, and we pass those discounts on the patients. Well, thank you for that. Dr. JC Folkers, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. And thank you to all of you out there for tuning in and sharing your energy, your focus, your attention and your time with us. Yeah, I appreciate it. I didn't even have CMAX today. So I apologize if I was a little bit, <laughs> a little bit all over the place. But hey, thank you for much, so much for having me, Nick. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Until next time. I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and hit the thumbs up. I love knowing who's in the 1% committed to reaching their full potential. Comment 1% below so that I know who you are. For all the resources and links, meet me on my website at mindbodypeak.com. I appreciate you and look forward to connecting with you. As a reminder, the information in this video is for information purposes only. Please consult your primary healthcare professional before making any lifestyle changes.